What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Dex. I'm your host Caleb. Today we're going to be looking at the top 5 underrated commanders that I think deserve more play and more love. There's a ton of commanders coming out this year, past years, and even more in the future and it's super easy to go ahead and miss them. So I'm going to go back again, look at some of my favorites, look at some really powerful ones. I'm going to showcase them here and hopefully we can get them some more play time. Notably, if any of these decks sound interesting to you, I have all of the deck lists listed down in the description down below. First off, I'd like to thank my patrons, New Cement Irrelevant, you guys rock. Now let's get right into this top five. The first one I wanna talk about is the Rani. Now this one's extremely powerful. She is basically a Grixis Blink deck, and what she does is whenever she enters the battlefield, you get to put the mark of the Rani on one of your opponent's creatures. Additionally, this will also trigger whenever she attacks, so we wanna protect her, give her some evasion, and make sure she can attack very consistently, and we also wanna blink her at least once a turn, so we're trying to get up to two marks of the Rani at least every one of our turns. Now that we're doing that, the mark of the Rani is going to give all of our opponent's creatures or the enchanted creatures plus two plus two and it's going to goad them. So now all of our opponents are going to be at each other's throats attacking themselves. This is amazing in those combat based metas so if you want to do that to your casual play group you will absolutely smash. Additionally whenever one of these goaded creatures deals combat damage you're going to create a clue token. So she has card advantage in the command zone, board control in the command zone. I think I've gotten three games in with this girl and I've absolutely smashed every single one with near perfect life total. Now what you're going to do is towards the end of the game, you're going to basically buff up all of your opponent's creatures and they're going to be massive. So that's going to be a problem for you until you realize the way this deck wins is we're either going to cast something like a cyber drive awakener to reanimate all of our clues. They're going to have flying. We're going to fly overhead and just kill that guy. Or we can just play mob rule and since we're buffing all of their creatures up, we control all of their creatures now and then we just alpha swing and kill the last player. It's basically just a terrible scenario for your opponents because they're all going to beat each other to death, they're all going to be at super low life total, and then by the time it gets down to just you and one other player, you're always going to win that 1v1. Moving on to the next commander, we have Korvold and no not that Korvold, the Korvold everybody forgot about. Now this guy's extremely powerful and I think he just gets overlooked because he cost eight mana but we can very easily get that reduced heavily now let's go over what this guy does he's going to cost eight mana right but we can reduce that by sacrificing permanence but it's not going to be like your dargo effect he actually gets reduced by the types that we're sacrificing so if we sacrifice an artifact and a creature and both of those go into the graveyard he's going to cost two less that turn it doesn't stack if you sacrifice two treasures he's still only going to cost one less you need multiple types whether it be enchantment planeswalker permanent types is what we care about here and then he has flying trample and haste so you're going to get to attack immediately with him which is really going to help out his viability and then when he connects you're going to put x11 counters on him equal to the amount of card types in your graveyard i think permanent card types in your graveyard which is what this deck wants to do anyway and then you're going to get to draw that many cards this is very fun for me as a brewer because it takes a lot of thinking outside the box to build this deck you want a lot of cards with a lot of different typings sometimes multiple typings one of the best cards in the deck for instance is absolutely garbage and I'm talking about Lion Diamond. This card simply reads sacrifice it add three mana to your mana pool and go ahead and discard your hand your entire hand. But why is this good in Korvold? Because not only is this an artifact creature so it counts as two of those typings it also gives us three mana so now we have five mana and it's just going to make it easy to cast Korvold and then sometimes we want our entire hand in the graveyard so we get more typings in the graveyard and draw more cards now if they have swords to plowshare you're going to be pretty sad but nine times out of ten you're going to connect catch them off guard because no one's ready for this giant Korvold turn four or three. Moving on to our next commander, we have Ellie and Allen, and I'm pretty sure these two are just underplayed for a couple reasons. One, the art's not super interesting, it's just two people looking at a dinosaur head. That doesn't really scream magic to me, so I think they got thrown to the wayside for that, but they've got an extremely powerful ability. All we have to do is tap them, exile a creature card from our graveyard, and they explore X, where X is the creature we exiled converted 
converted mana cost. So this is an extremely powerful commander. We're going to play a ton of untappers and I actually went with uh, a looter strategy. So we're drawing cards, we're discarding cards, and when we discard those cards, we're discarding those giant creatures that we're really not gonna cast anyway. And then whenever we exile those cards, we're just casting bombs. We have Apex Devastator in this deck. I like Shirakai Genesis Engine because again, that's an amazing looter. I like playing Emoti in this deck as well because now all of those giant creatures you're casting for free, because remember, Discover is a cast trigger, you're also going to get to or sorry cascade on top of the explore trigger so this deck kind of just explodes with value and it can result in you casting almost your entire deck not to mention discovered is kind of like a fixed cascade because you don't have to cast it so even if you discover into something broken or maybe just a counter spell you can actually just go ahead and put that in your hand instead of casting it and it's just going to be solid card advantage even if you don't cheat that creature out again i think these two suffer from just having some poor art no one really liked the art style with the Jurassic World and I kind of get it it kind of looks out of uh, you know IP or whatever you want to say but regardless this is an extremely powerful commander that will catch your playgroup off guard another one I really want to showcase is Shigeki now I know people aren't keen on mono decks in the first place and this guy does look weird it's a green mill deck but I assure you this guy does everything you need to create a super powerful deck first of all he's an enchantment so we can play all of our enchantress effects there's a ton in green so now whenever we cast him we're going to draw an additional card and the whole goal of the deck is to to make it to where we actually gain mana from casting him and returning him to our hand. Now this takes a ton of setup, but the cards we're playing are just really good in a green stompy deck anyway. Like Defiler of Vigor. Defiler of Vigor not only gets rid of Shigeki's green pip, but additionally it's going to buff up the entire board whenever we're casting him. Then we're going to play some Emerald Medallion to get rid of his generic cost, and boom, you've got yourself a free Shigeki. But then you have to pay the additional two to return him back to our hand, right? Well, this is where our Lotus Cobra effects come into play because whenever we return him to our hand we get to look at the top four and put lands into play and then whenever we're putting lands into play we're generating mana with our load Lotus Cobra effects we're even playing our untap effects like spelunking that way we can just generate even more mana now the other problem this deck has is it's a tap ability so we do have to give him haste but once we've got haste some cost reducers on the battlefield and a giant board state we can draw our entire deck now again that seems far-fetched, but there's a lot of redundancy. You'll have to check out the list to look at all of it at once, but I'm really fond of this deck, and it's even put up a couple of wins without me having to cast my entire library because green stompy decks just kind of do the thing. The last commander we're going to talk about today, and the number one commander that you guys should be playing and trying out and giving more love, is Gyrus Waker of Corpses. Now, if you guys have been a fan of the channel for a while now, this will not surprise you. I absolutely love this commander. He's my favorite little jank deck everybody's got their own commander that doesn't really see a lot of play that they try to make work as many times as possible and Gyrus is mine I've built several decks of this guy and I finally come up with my complete deck version that I think is near solved and that's why I want to share them with you guys now now this guy is not very good and when you read him uh, he sounds pretty bad so let's see what Gyrus does now he's X and then Jund and then he enters the battlefield with counters equal to the amount of mana we spend to cast him so even when he's dying and we're having to pay our commander tax he's actually just going to enter the battlefield bigger and bigger now where this guy is really cool is <clears throat> sorry now, where this guy gets kind of insane is he can actually attack, and then we get a reanimate, or actually, sorry, we don't get a reanimate shit with this guy. It kind of sucks. We have to exile that card, and then we create a token copy of that card that gets exiled at the end of combat. Yes, not in step at the end of combat. They really really like brutalize this guy as far as balancing went and he wouldn't even have been that broken if they didn't but that's besides the point that's a different rant a rant right this guy is going to reanimate a creature or not reanimate exile and then you get to put a token copy of that creature on the battlefield that's tapped and attacking but it has to be less than Gyrus's power. So you want Gyrus to be pretty big, you want him to start reanimating some creatures, and then we're gonna get value off of their ETBs, and then it's a Jund deck over, after all, right? So we're also going to be sacrificing those creatures, we're gonna be sacrificing Gyrus to your greater good effects, and then we're just going to get value off of those creatures. Another thing that really shines in this deck is Rakdos Lord of Riots, because once we deal a little bit of damage, we can reduce the cost of all of our creatures. Gyrus has an X ability, so Gyrus is going to enter the battlefield 
and be massive. Additionally, when you pair this with Terror of the Peaks, you can just do increasingly more mana and all you have to do is have a greater good effect or something that adds mana to our mana pool like a Ruthless Technomancer. And then you can easily sacrifice Gyrus for a ton of treasure tokens and then you cast him again. Terror of the Peaks deals damage and Rakdos is going to lower the cost of Gyrus even more. And you can kind of machine gun the entire table down this way. Now that's not infinite, but it almost is and it does a lot of damage. I did want to talk about this commander again because we have gotten a huge upgrade to it, which is the Master Multiplied. He takes that huge balancing effect I, effect I talked about earlier and completely throws it out the window. Not only is the Master Multiplied really easy to reanimate with Gyrus because again, it cares about the power of the creature in the graveyard and the Master Multiplied is not very big. So what we're going to do is we're going to attack with Gyrus, reanimate the Master Multiplied, and then the Master Multiplied is going to say, hey, your tokens are just not going to exile. So now we get rid of the limiting factor that Gyrus had on him, and we can utilize him in the way that I fully believe that he should have been built in the first place. It does take a little bit of setup, but it's a Jund mill deck, so we're going to mill the answers or the things we need to find the Master Multiplied into the graveyard pretty quickly. And then I did put a little cheeky win con in the deck that has been pretty good, and guys, this card's a pretty, uh, an overperformer in the deck, and maybe even a commander that deserves a list. Bladewing Deathless Tyrant. Now this thing has haste, it's a massive dragon, and it's pretty easy to reanimate with Gyrus because Gyrus gets big. Now whenever he attacks and deals combat damage, we generate a massive army of those zombies equal to the amount of creatures in our graveyard, which is a lot in this deck. And now that doesn't win us the game, but it does with an extra combat step because what we're going to do is we're going to get an extra combat step after that. We won't have blade wing anymore, but we have all of those tokens and then we're going to slam a crater hoof behemoth on the battlefield, not by casting it by attacking with Gyrus because remember crater hoof only has five power and I know it's crater hoof behemoth. Imagine that it's winning another game, but I justified putting crater hoof behemoth in this deck because Gyrus is not a great card. I think it's the last deck that I own with Crater Hoof in, and I refuse to take it out because it's kind of synergistic here, and Gyrus needs all the help he can get, guys. So additional, so now that Crater Hoof's entered the battlefield, we have all of those tokens that have massive power now, but they can't attack, right? Except Anger's in our graveyard, and we can attack and win the game. With that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed these lists. I think I'm going to start doing lists again. I love doing lists, and this will be in addition to the deck text, but I I hope you guys enjoyed.